friends and welcome back to our homestead. Today I'm making a very simple recipe that I want to share with you that many people will argue of its original origin. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It's delicious. And even though many countries will claim that it came from their origin, all of my Eastern European neighborhood we will share and say it's delicious. Let's make it. So today I'm going to be making a stewed meat and cabbage dish. In some languages it's called bikus, in others it's called uh, bikon, but it doesn't matter because they all correct and it depends on where you come from. So I, um, I want to share the European, Eastern European style because Ukrainians make it, the Polish make it, the Lithuanians make it, all of the Baltic states, they make it. So you know what? It doesn't matter where it came from. Everyone has slightly different variation, but they're all delicious. And today I'm going to make a very simple method. Very, very simple. Nothing, nothing exotic, nothing difficult. And you guys, what's good about this recipe is that you may interchangeably move things around and it's still going to be delicious. So let me show you the ingredients we're going to be needing for this dish so obviously we're gonna meet, need some meat and as a matter of fact in some regions they call them hunter stew because it's made around hunting season because that's the abundance of meat so in my case i have some beef i have some pork if you don't want to use any pork feel free to omit pork altogether but i'm going to be using it in my case and then i have our home smoked pork belly look at this beautiful sala i have here and this is just a little bit of ham, um, again, smoked ham. If you don't want to use any uh, pork products, feel free to omit that altogether. Then I'm going to be using a fresh head, uh, head of cabbage. I have beautiful homegrown cabbage. Onion, medium onion, one medium green apple. If you don't have any fresh tomatoes, use just a little bit of tomato paste. But in my case, I have these are the last of my homegrown tomatoes. And these are three little tomatoes. Two to three carrots. Garlic. We love garlic, so I'm using a lot of garlic. This is a whole head of garlic. Of course, it's not going to be Slavic dish if you don't use dill. So I'm going to be using some fresh dill. I'm going to be cooking everything using butter, but if you don't want to use butter, use some olive oil. And then at the end, I'm going to add a surprise ingredient. And I'm not going to add it now because I want it to stay completely, completely fresh. So let's get going. And I want to show you what that secret ingredient is going to be at the end. It's going to be a nice surprise for those of you who have never made this bikas before. All right, so let's get going. I'm going to start by actually heating up heating up my large pot. And the pot that I'm using is a, um, a like a Dutch oven thick bottom pot. Why am I using that? It's because I like how it's going to take a while to cook. So it's going to be slow cooking. And that's what I'm, I like it about. So I just took three nice pieces of sala which is a homemade bacon and i'm just chopping them up in small little chunks because that's going to be the base for my for my dish okay not many old-fashioned recipes don't have uh, sala it's very commonly used in eastern european cooking so i'm just going to chop that up and i'm going to be chopping up the ham as well all right, before I touch the meat. And I'm just chopping them up in large chunks as well. It doesn't matter how big they are, okay? Just like that. And that's gonna be the start to my cooking. All right, so my pot is nice and hot and I'm just gonna be putting some butter in it or you can use oil, really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna be starting with the bacon and the ham and let that cook together for a minute and i'm going to cut up all the meat into small manageable pieces as well so let this cook i'm going to turn down the heat a little bit i don't want this to burn this dish is often made with smoked sausage smoked meats smoked ham something about smoked it has to be smoked well i didn't have any smoked sausage so i'm using 
smoked bacon and smoked ham that I have. And this is just a very soft, very nice piece of beef I have. I'm cutting up in small chunks like this. And I'm gonna be browning that together in the butter with the other meats. So again, maybe the reason why they're calling this hunter's stew, because again, this is when, you know, that's when the meat is available. Growing up in the uh, former Soviet Union, meat was a very expensive commodity. We did not eat it every day. It was not easy to come by. And um, you would just, you couldn't just go to the store and purchase a piece of meat if you wanted to. You had to go to a, a market, farmer's market, where um, by the grace of God, you probably could buy a piece or two of meat. All right, so let me brown this all together. Oh, the aroma of smoked meat cooking is so, so good. So let all this meat brown nicely on each side. And I'm just gonna season it a little bit with salt and just black pepper, nothing special. Just a little salt, little pepper. In the meantime, we have a clean cutting board, clean hands, clean he uh, new knife. And I'm just going to chop up the onion. And you guys can chop it up in any shape or form you want to. I'm just gonna make a little cubes out of this because it will nicely cook that way, in my opinion. All right, so I'm just gonna cook them, cut them up, put them, push them aside. And I'm gonna cut all the other vegetables as well. Sometimes I wonder why all of the good, nostalgic, cutty meals always take a while to cook. It's nothing open a package and done. No, just think about it. When you go to your grandmother's house and, you know, and a nice old-fashioned meal is served, it was cooked for a while. And I often think about that and I'm like, well, why is it so? And in my opinion, it's because in the olden days, our ancestors cooked in those wood stoves, ovens, right? That would heat the house and you're able to cook with it. And it took a while because you had to maintain the heat in a certain way so things did not burn. And very often, the, you know, the pot of meal was put in and it would be cooking for a, for a while. So this is just a green onion, um, I mean green apple. I'm going to slice in thin slices as well. All right. So I know that this dish can also be made with um, other meats, as I mentioned, but also with additional ingredients such as mushrooms. And in the winter, often it was dried mushrooms that were rehydrated and cooked uh, with mushrooms or with dried uh, prunes, dried prunes. In my case, I'm not putting any of that. I'm keeping it low key, just like this, nothing special, because I'm sure that all of these ingredients are right there in your pantry. And I'm gonna be slicing, slicing the um, carrot as well. I'm gonna to try to keep it on a small side, so I'm gonna be slicing them very thin, almost like a julienne it's called. So I'm cutting them on an angle, then putting down a little pile and slicing that pile again. So they're coming out nice and beautiful slices just like this. All right, I have to go stir the meat, make sure that nothing burns. But we do want a nice, beautiful brown happening to it, but without burning, of course, because we want to maintain a good flavor. So I remember mama making this, and like I said, you know, meat was not very easy to obtain, but thank God we had our own animals that we raised, and we were able to uh, slaughter them and cook for our family when we needed meat. All right, it's browning nicely. Wow, so beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna be adding my cut up vegetables, and I have the onion here, all right. And I have the green apple. And I have the carrot. I'm gonna go for, the next is gonna be the tomato. 
My Ukrainian friends are gonna say that this is their dish. My Belarus friends will say that it's their dish. My Polish friends will say that no, it's our dish. My Lithuanian friends will say that it's also their dish. So I just know that people pronounce them differently depending where you come from. But that region of Eastern Europe, they cook this dish a lot. And it's very popular in the winter months. All right, here's the chopped up fresh tomato going there as well. And these are the tomatoes that I took down from my greenhouse when they were still green. And I wrapped them in a newspaper and allowed them to continue ripening in the house. Because now we already have cold, cold autumn, winter temperatures outside. So let this stew for a little while. I'm going to put the cover on. I'm going to turn down the heat even more. And let this stew for a good 20 to 30 minutes. I need to get the garlic ready as well. So I just peeled it and I'm going to chop it into small pieces. You may use a garlic press, whatever you like. I'm just going to chop it up in small little pieces, little chunks, and I'm going to be adding it shortly into my meat mixture. All right, so I just wanted to share with you guys about my nostalgic memories of cooking, slow cooking on uh, the old-fashioned stoves. Not many people have them right now anymore. You know, we're going for more accommodations such as gas or electric stoves and it's quick 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 but there is just something about that aroma of food that was prepared in the slow cooking process of a wood stove so if you guys have outdoor wood ovens like pizza ovens this can be done in the uh, pizza oven where you just put all the ingredients together and you cook it slowly on on a low heat like low um, stewing type of heat and this is a very very popular dish so I know that you know um, we all have different nostalgic memories of good food and for me it was when mama was cooking in the kitchen for something that was on a slow braising very very slow or um, in, in a stove or something like that. And it always involves like our homegrown vegetables, homegrown meat. And it's just my mama was a great, great cook and she knew how to stretch a dollar. Well, in those days was a ruble. How to stretch a ruble to feed a large family. And I think I've learned a lot uh, from her and I hope to keep that memory alive. So I'm just chopping this all up and I'm gonna be adding it to the meat as well. The next thing I'm gonna prepare is the cabbage. And I have a medium size, actually it's probably not medium, it's probably a large size head of cabbage from my garden that I harvested a little while ago. And I'm just gonna cut them up into, into thin, thin. So I'm gonna cut them in fours first. Separate them in four sections, okay? And then I'm going to be just chopping it up into very thin slices. So let me tell you guys something that is going to be a surprise at the end. Well, I probably won't tell you now because then it will not be a surprise. All right, so I'm just slicing it like in thin, thin slices just like this. Okay. Let's add all of this beautiful cabbage to the meat mixture all right and this is going to cook now on low and slow all right it's been cooking for about 25 minutes let's take a look what i forgot to tell you guys because my camera died is that i've decided to add a couple of bay leaves because why not bay leaves make everything so much better so the cabbage is becoming much much softer i'm just going to stir everything Okay, make sure that nothing is burning on the bottom. The cabbage released a lot of beautiful liquid. Look at all that nice, beautiful juice in there. Yeah. All right, so um, every region has their own spices that they like to add or not to add. 
I'm gonna keep it simple and plain. I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm gonna keep it just like this, all right? Because I really wanted the smoked meat to shine as a flavor in here, and I think that's what's important. So I'm gonna um, put the cover back on, keep the heat low, and cook for another 20 minutes because I want that meat to really marry together with the cabbage and release nice, delicious goodness. All right, let's do the final check. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'm just gonna stir it all up. I need to give it a taste. And I got to show you the final secret. The final little, I'm gonna turn this off. The final little surprise that I'm gonna do, all right? Okay, friends, and for the final ingredient, the surprise ingredient is gonna be the sauerkraut. So here's my sauerkraut that I made exactly a year ago. So look at it right now, and it's been stored in the fridge, and yes, it keeps the cover on. Mmm, smells like sauerkraut, love it, so nostalgic. So, okay, as you guys know, sauerkraut, kvashene kapusta is very popular in Slavic, Eastern European cuisine, right? And you know that. It's so popular and it's so good for you. And this bigus or bigus, whatever you want to pronounce it, dish that I made today is often made using just the sauerkraut. However, I chose not to do that. I chose to use fresh cabbage and I'm going to be adding this only now. I'm going to be adding it only now that I already turned it off the heat. See, this has life probiotics. It has life culture in this sauerkraut. And by cooking it, I would have killed all of the natural fermented probiotics that do live in sauerkraut that are so beneficial to our health. So I wanted to preserve that. So this is why I finished cooking. I turned off the heat. I'm waiting for that heat to calm down just a little bit. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of homemade sauerkraut that I made a year ago. And it's gonna pretty much finish the dish. Oh yes, of course, the dill. I have to add the dill. We have to add the dill. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding my sauerkraut. It's about a cup on here. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming amount, but it's about a cup. And like I said, this is already cooling off. So I'm just gonna mix everything together, okay? And as always, guys, you know, here's my dill. I preserve a lot of dill because we do use a lot of dill throughout the season. So I grow a lot of dill, <laughs> grow a lot of dill, and we cook with a lot of dill. All right, so now, my friends, I need to give it a final taste. Oh my goodness, this is very, very nostalgic. And it cooking, it's a slow and low cooking. So it has a chance for the meat to become very, very soft and tender. All right, so let's give it a little taste to make sure everything is where it should be as far as spices. If I need to add in a little bit more salt, a little more pepper, more garlic, this is a good time to taste it. Mmm, I think it's perfect. So friends, I hope you have a chance to make this very simple dish. It took a little while, slow and low cooking, but it's so delicious and it's so fragrant. And it's very healthy, and if you're trying to eat low carb, it's very low carb, if any at all. Just a little bit of carrot, maybe. So whatever you like to call it, bigus or bigus, whatever you pronounce it, you can even call it as stewed meat with cabbage, hunter stew, whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you, it's delicious. With a little bit of sauerkraut at the end, it's a perfect, perfect finish. So friends, be encouraged to cook your old-fashioned family recipes. Dig out those old recipe books that your grandmothers cooked long, long ago because there's nothing better than homemade meal. So friends, be encouraged and try something new.